Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman. And in this video, we are going to be talking about point slope form and not just point slope form, but what we can, but how we can write lines in point slope form. Now, point slope form is exactly what it sounds like. We use a point and we use a slope to write this. Now, we've talked about a couple of different forms of lines so far. We've talked about standard form. Now, standard form has our X and Y together. And in standard form, we've got something times X plus something times y equals a third number. Now this a, b, and c are typically any real number that we want it to be, um, or any number at all. However, it will really vary depending on what we're doing here. So that is standard form. Our next form is slope-intercept form. So in slope-intercept form, we involve our slope and our intercept. So we've got y equals mx plus b, and in this case, our m is our slope. And our B is our Y intercept. And this is super helpful when it comes to graphing because we can start at our Y intercept and we can graph our slope from there, which is fantastic. Our second option that we have here is actually called point slope form or our third option. And in point slope form, we use our point and our slope together. So when it comes to point slope form, we have the line Y e or Y, sorry, minus Y1 equals M times x minus x1. Now, the beautiful thing about math is we typically use the same letters to mean the same thing. So just like in slope intercept form, our m here is still our slope. Now, the difference is we have a point here. So this x1 and y1 comes from our point, where our point is x1 comma y1. So we take our x and y value from our point and we put them right into our equation. Now, we can use this to actually rewrite it in slope intercept form if needed, but we can do it exactly like this. So anytime we're writing something in point slope form, we need the slope and a point. So if I was given the slope and a point, it's pretty easy to write it in point slope form. So if our form here is y minus y1 equals our slope times x minus x1, we can plug, plug our point and our slope right in there. Now remember our point is the point x1, y1. So we're going to replace our y1 with 3 and our x1 with negative 8 here. So we've got y minus 3 equals our slope of 1 fourth times x minus our negative eight. Now remember in math, we don't usually like to write a minus and negative next to each other. So we switch them to a positive. And that would be that in point slope form. So it's not too tricky. Now we can use this to rewrite it in slope intercept form. And we will do that at the end of this video. However, we can just leave it right here. So when they give it to us in point slope form, it makes it fantastic. Now, sometimes they don't give us a point and a slope. Sometimes they just give us two points, but we know that we can calculate something um, given just two points, especially calculating our slope here. So slope, remember, we can calculate by doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? So we need our slope. We also need a point. Now, the beautiful thing is they gave us two, so we can pick either one. And we're going to actually walk through and see why these two things are the same by switching them into that slope intercept form. So our slope here, remember, we've got our x1, y1, x2, y2. And we want to plug them right into our slope form here. So we've got negative 2 minus 2 over 3 minus 1. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. Negative 4 divided by 2 gives us a negative 2. So our slope in this case is negative 2. Now we have two different points that we can use. We can either use the point 1, 2, or I can use the point 3, negative 2. It doesn't matter. So that actually ends up giving us two different formulas or two different equations that we can use. We can have y minus 2 equals negative two times x minus one. That's what would come from our first point here. Or we could also write y minus negative two or y plus two equals negative two times x minus three. And that would come from our second one here. Now, I want you to look at these. Other than the slope, these look like totally different lines. However, we can actually manipulate these using the distributive property and simplifying to show that they're the same. So for example, we can use our distributive property here to see that y minus two is the same as negative two x plus two. And if I add two to both sides, I end up getting that y equals negative two x plus four. Now, please note that this right here is actually in our slope intercept form. And it's gonna be easier to compare these when they're in that slope intercept form. So we've got our first option here. Now let's take a look at our second one and see what happens. As I do that same process of our distributive property, I get y plus two equals negative two x plus six. Then I subtract two from both sides here and I end up seeing that y equals negative two x plus four. What do you notice? They're the same, look at that. 
So these are two of the same line when we switch it into that slope intercept form. And you can see that we can do that easily by using our distributive property and then getting our y all by itself. But that is the process that we would use to write an equation in point slope form given just two points. So there's lots of different things that we can do. Point slope form has lots of great benefits to it if that's what you're looking for. Otherwise, slope intercept form works as well. And there is a video on how to write equations in slope intercept form. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. But that is how you can write an equation for a line in point slope form.